was Delano Gambino boss. June 26, 1915 to December 16, 1985, was an American crime boss who succeeded Carlo Gambino as head of the Gambino crime family. A true mobster of the New York scene was Paul Castellano. Castellano was born in Brooklyn, New York in 1915 to Italian immigrants who were involved in the Mangano crime family, the predecessor of the Gambino family. Paul dropped out of school in the eighth grade and started training as a butcher. He also learned the ropes of his father's side business. Paul's first, the power of silence. By 1934, Paul Castellano was 19. He took to wearing the sharp suits he admired. Working for his father, both as a butcher and a hustler, allowed him to afford the finer things in life. At six foot two, Big Paul was ready to make a name for himself. Over the July 4th weekend, Castellano and two buddies drove to a party in Connecticut. Along the way, they stopped off at a clothing store, but shopping was the last thing on Paul's mind. He wanted to rob the joint. They told him, I mean, this is going to be easy. He's like taking candy from a baby. Castellano pulled a pistol from his glove compartment and the three young men entered the store. Paul brandished the pistol to the owner, relieving him of the $51 in his wallet. Castellano and his two partners rifled through the cash register but found nothing. Paul had hoped for more. The men left the store with only $17 each. Witnesses reported the license plate number to the police. When Paul returned home to Brooklyn, he was arrested. During interrogation, Castellano claimed the other two men were hitchhikers and he didn't know their names. Big Paul took the fall alone and was sent to the slammer for a year. Gambino had established himself as a business-savvy earner for one of the top five underworld crime families. In 1937, Paul married his childhood sweetheart Nina Mano. By the 1950s, Castellano was a hard-working father of four. He took what he learned from his cousin Gambino and developed a successful meat distribution company called Blue Ribbon Meats. In the early 50s, Paul's cousin Carlo Gambino was rewarded for his shrewd business style. A capo named Albert Anastasia had muscled his way to the top of the Mangano family and eventually appointed Carlo Gambino as underboss. Gambino was now second in command, but Gambino wasn't happy being number two, and he joined with other mobsters. On October 25th, 1957, Anastasia entered a Manhattan barbershop. Five bullets riddled the mob chief's body. Gambino became the de facto head of the Manganos, and his cousin Paul was right by his side. Blood is always thicker than water. In November, nearly 100 elite mafiosi leaders gathered for a secret meeting in New York. Castellano attended as a guest of Carlo Gambino. At 42 years old, Castellano was one of the youngest men at the meeting. In the 1960s, Castellano's cousin and close friend Carlo Gambino had established himself as the well-respected patriarch of one of the biggest crime families in the United States. By 1976, Carlo Gambino's health was failing, so Castellano temporarily took charge of the Gambino family's business. He had to make a choice. It came down to two men, Gambino, Doug Roach. Rumors flew that the loyal Della Croach would be the next boss of the family. But on his deathbed, Gambino shocked everyone and selected Paul Castellano. Dallas Coach was your prototypical mafia street thug. Gambino members immediately split into two factions, those who supported the business-savvy Castellano and those who favored the blue-collar Della Croach. Among the disgruntled in the Gambino family was a young hothead named John Gotti. Gotti was a Delacrosse loyalist. God, he wanted Delacos to have it because he was his mentor. War within the Gambino crime family was averted. Boss Castellano focused on white-collar crimes like bid rigging, political corruption, and union infiltration. He entered a thug named Roy DeMeo for the Mary. Looked like the gangster he was a dog right there was a homicidal maniac DeMeo served Castellano well, running a gang of brutal murderers called the DeMaio Crew. They were the most feared crew in New York City. DeMaio would murder the victims, dismember the bodies, and dump them in a landfill. Castellano was too pleased with the cash he brought into the family. In the late 1970s, Paul Castellano was raking in millions from legitimate businesses and criminal rackets as boss of New York's Gambino crime family. By infiltrating construction unions, 
Castellano seemingly controlled every drop of concrete used to build the ever-changing Manhattan skyline. His presence made New York construction costs the highest in the nation. Nina hired a 30-years-old Colombian immigrant named Gloria Olarte as a live-in maid. Big Paul was immediately smitten. 64 years old, Castellano started focusing more attention on his young mistress than on the family business. By the 1980s, he was growing reclusive and rarely left his Staten Island mansion. It was difficult for Castellano to keep an eye on his men. One of Castellano's rules was a prohibition from dealing drugs. Frank Amato, a street thug who married Paul's only daughter, Connie, found this out the hard way. Frank Mata was physically abusive. She had a miscarriage. Paul Castellano instantly decided that the miscarriage was because his daughter had been abused. Big Paul was furious and turned to Hitman. As a result, they killed Frank Amato there and cut his body up, and he was never seen again. Federal investigators had developed a powerful tool in the fight against organized crime and bosses like Paul Castellano. It was called the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, or RICO. The Department of Justice knew that bringing down the mob would require a lot of manpower, so Giuliani formed an organized crime task force. One FBI agent even befriended Castellano's mistress, Gloria Olarte. The two developed a relationship and occasionally met for coffee to discuss Big Paul's home life. By the 1980s, Paul Castellano was firmly in control of the Gambino crime family. Castellano has the rule from now on, I get 15%. Family division. Castellano was grabbing everything with both hands. De La Crosse resented it, and Gotti suddenly resented it. But Deli Course kept a lid on things. Castellano's home life wasn't going smoothly either. His battle with diabetes left him impotent, so he could not please his mistress Gloria Olarte. For Big Paul, there was trouble brewing in his crime family and more within the walls of his home. But up to this point, the FBI's Gambino squad hadn't been able to crack. Castellano's Staten Island mansion then in March 1982, the feds found a dent in the Gambino armor, a lowly soldier and drug trafficker Angelo, known as Quack Quack. By November, the Ruggiero tapes provided enough evidence for the feds to get a judge's approval for a second bug, this one in Castellano's home. Paul's lover, Gloria Olarte, unwittingly provided the answer over a cup of coffee with the FBI agent who had befriended her. FBI agents scoped out the neighborhood. There was no alarm system issue. There was no dog issue. There was just a people issue. While the FBI tried to figure out how to bug the White House, they started looking into Roy DeMeo's car theft ring and how Castellano benefited from it. When a car thief for the DeMaio crew was arrested, they wondered if Roy DeMeo would crumble under the FBI's pressure and rat him out. Castellano summoned Capo John Gotti to his mansion and ordered the hit on DeMeo. But like most gangsters, Gotti was afraid of DeMaio and his crew. Castellano let Gotti off the hook. On January 10th, 1983, DeMaio left his Long Island home, knowing he had to be back that night to celebrate his daughter's 22nd birthday. Mayo walked into the shop. Gaji pulled out a handgun and shot him repeatedly in the head. By 1983, Paul Castellano's personal life was a mess. His wife of 46 years, Nina, moved out of the family mansion. The feds in the meantime were about to move in. Big family, big time. By spring, the FBI finally figured out a way to plant a critical bug. They decided to scramble Castellano's cable television signal and wait for him to call a repairman. When Castellano began having reception problems, he told his favorite capo Tommy Bellotti to call the repairman. FBI Special Agent Joe Cantamessa intercepted the call. Castellano gave Bellotti strict orders to keep a close eye on the technician. They eventually made their way to the kitchen where Castellano held his top secret meetings. Cantamessa said he had located the issue wires in the kitchen cabinets. After the agent left, Castellano's mysterious reception problem cleared up. The FBI captured 600 hours of conversations between Castellano and fellow Gambinos. On August 8th, the feds arrested Ruggiero and four others on heroin trafficking charges. As captain of the drug dealing, if Castellano ever heard the Ruggiero tapes, he'd be dead. Underboss Neil De La Croce tried to keep the peace. He recommended that Castellano wait until prosecutors released the tapes before making any rash decisions. Big Paul agreed. Delacrosse took up for John Gotti. 
In March 1984, they were ready to make their move. Federal agents arrested Castellano and nine others in connection with crimes committed by Roy DeMaio's car theft. Castellano now faced charges of murder, car theft, drug trafficking, and extortion. In May 1984, Paul Castellano was free on bail and still raking in millions as head of the Gambino crime family. FBI cameras captured evidence. The photos provided ammunition for the government's ongoing RICO case against New York organized crime. On February 25, 1985, Prosecutor Rudy Giuliani made his move and arrested Castellano, as well as top mobsters from all five of New York's crime families all over the place that night. Paul learned the evidence that got him locked up came in part from bugs planted in his own home. When Castellano found out about it, he went crazy. However, it was another short stay in the slammer for Castellano. He posted the $4 million bail and was released after one night. Castellano appointed his dim-witted sidekick, Tommy Bellotti as the family's new underboss. Gotti felt that he deserved the promotion, and Castellano's disrespect was a sign of danger to come. Gotti wanted Castellano gone. Gotti and Angelo Ruggiero recruited members from within the Gambino family to hit Castellano. A soldier named Sammy the Bull Gravano and several others agreed to take part. On December 16, 1985, Castellano was scheduled to meet with fellow Gambino family members. Gotti and his crew of assassins were in position. Paul was on the passenger side. As Paul opened his door, four men in trench coats descended upon the vehicle. Two gunmen opened fire on Paul Castellano, shooting him six times in the head and torso. The other two assassins fired on Pilates. Pedestrians began screaming and scattered. Castellano's head was resting in the door jam of the Lincoln. Paul Castellano was pronounced dead ending his reign as the Gambino boss and the chairman of the commission. So, this was all about today's video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like these.